This is the genetics problems lab that uh, would have done on Tuesday, October 30th, and Monday, November the 5th. So, let's go. Well, there we go. So, going over here, one of the first things we want to look at in this is the idea of being able to roll the tongue. So, some people can roll their tongue. Put mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other people cannot do that. No matter how hard you try, you cannot learn how to do it. So, if you're able to do that, it's because you have at least one copy of this, so in here, of this dominant allele right here for being able to roll the tongue. If you cannot roll your tongue, you are what's called homozygous recessive. You have two copies of this recessive allele. Okay, so let's go over here and look at this one. And so here's the possible genotypes that's associated with being able to roll the tongue. You could be big R, big R, big R, little r, which is called heterozygous, or little r, little r, homozygous recessive. And so if, uh, if you have at least one copy of this dominant allele, you are the roller. You're able to roll your tongue. If you cannot roll your tongue, you are homozygous recessive. So, let's look at this example right here. And you notice we have both parents are able to roll their tongue. And then the electricity went off. Came back on. Uh, I guess I'm still recording. So, both parents are able to roll their tongue. And both parents are heterozygous right here, right here. And from that, we're going to get half the egg cells carry big R, half the egg cells carry little, so, little R. Same thing over here in the sperm cells. Okay. If we put that on the Punnett square, we have these possibilities right here that the children could be homozygous dominant, heterozygous heterozygous or homozygous recessive. And so from that we get our uh, we get our ratios. Now folks have generally in this class people don't have a whole lot of trouble with this. You guys most almost all of you have seen this before in high school, maybe even junior high. This is where people kind of have a problem is this idea of the ratio. With the ratio we're telling two pieces of information. We're telling qualitative information. So what are the categories, in this case, roller and non-roller, and quantitative information? Right here, three to one. How many individuals do we expect in each of those categories? So in the ratio, it's two pieces of information. What's the category, and how many individuals we expect in that category? Then. This is the different categories are separated here by colon. And a colon means this group compared to this group. But down here on the genotypic ratio, we've got three categories homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. And in that first category, we expect one individual. Here we expect two. Here we expect one. Now, where those numbers are coming from, right back over here. So you notice we expect one, two, three that are rollers for every one that's a non roller. Here we have one in that category, two in that category right there, and one in that category. So that's where those numbers in the uh, phenotypic values are coming from. Now, probability. Probability is asking a very specific question. What is the probability of a child from this couple, oh, let's go back there, a child from that couple being able to roll his tongue? Well, look at the front of square, and there's one, two, three that can roll their tongue out of a total of four. 
So probability of the child being lower is three quarters or 75%. Probability of non rolling back to the Punnett square, is this one individual, one out of the four possibilities. So a one fourth probability of being non rolling. Okay, let's look at example two. Well, in example two, you see similar. Mom is able to roll her tongue. Dad cannot. Mom is heterozygous. Dad, being that he has the recessive phenotype, he is homozygous recessive. So, in mom, half the spurt, half the egg cells are going to be very big R, half the egg cells are little r. In dad, every one of the sperm cells is going to carry little r. So we don't have to list it twice because it would be two of the same thing. It would be little r and little r. So we go to put it square and notice we're listing all of mom's gametes and all of dad's gametes. So our Punnett square is a two by one square. Doesn't have to be that two by two square. So you notice this couple could produce this child that's heterozygous and this child right here homozygous recessive. So we look at our ratios and we expect for every one roller, we expect one non-roller, phenotypic ratios. Now the genotypic ratios, and this, we expect zero in that category, so zero homozygous dominant, and then one in each of the other categories. So in this ratio, we could have some zero uh, values in there if there's a certain group that we cannot, uh, we will not see. Okay, from this couple, probability of child being roller is one half, probability of being non-roller is one half. So if we go back to the square, you see one out of the two would be roller, one out of the two or one half would be non-roller. So let's look at an example of this uh, with something a little more serious than rolling the tongue, and there's this, uh, what's called Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is a problem with a lysosome. You recall from earlier in the semester, lysosome, the structure inside the cell is going to digest old, worn out parts. And it's also going to digest waste materials. So what happens in this case is one of the enzymes that should be present in the uh, lysosome is not made correctly. So there is a um, there is a lipid waste material that accumulates or that is formed in the neurons in the brain and in this child that has Tay-Sachs disease they don't produce a, a needed enzyme and so that lipid waste material does not uh, wind up being broken down. So that means that lipid waste material accumulates there in the uh, in the neurons in the brain, and this interferes with their function. It stops the uh, uh, functioning of these neurons. Uh, they, uh, basically, the child loses uh, ability, uh, the uh, function of the brain, and it's 100% fatal. The child dies uh, somewhere around one and a half years of age to about three or four years of age. So 100% fatal. Now, this child with Tay-Sachs disease has a recessive trait, and that means that this child has the homozygous recessive genotype. So, little r, I'm sorry, in this case it would be t's. Little t, come on, little t right there. Okay, the parents of this child have to be carriers. And a carrier is a person who is heterozygous, this person has a normal phenotype, but the person carries a detrimental recessive allele. So this person is going to have a genotype big T for uh, to make that look like a T, big T for the ability to produce this enzyme, the dominant, and little T for a, a nonsense code which does not tell the cell how to make this enzyme. 
Okay, let's go on over here and look at uh, some examples of this. So let's say that we have two parents that are both normal. Okay, so that is their the x in between. That means we're making a cross between these two. This is always female listed on the left, male listed over here on the right, and both of the parents are normal. Okay? That's the phenotypes. Now, genotypes are both carriers. So, big T, little t. Dad, the same genotype. X in between means cross between those. So, now the egg cells, these two will separate, and half the egg cells will carry uh, big T, half the egg cells will carry little t, and it's going to be the same thing in sperm cells. Since dad has the same uh, genotype, it's going to have the same uh, gametes right here. So, we put this on Punnett square, and what we would see is from mom, we get this and this. So there's mom's gametes. Then from dad, we get this and this. So here's the children that this couple could produce. They could have this child. That's supposed to be big T, big T. My writing on this iPad is not that great. And so uh, they could have that child that's homozygous dominant, completely free of it. They could have this child that is a carrier like the parents, won't be affected, that child will be normal. They could have this child, so the same genotype, except you got the dominant from mom, up here this one got the dominant from dad. Or they could have this child right here, and that is a child that would have Tay-Sachs disease. So, uh, we look at probability, we can talk about probability of child from that, this couple being normal. Well, it's one, two, three out of four possibilities. So the probability of normal is three quarters. You say, what is the probability that a child from this couple right here would have Tay Sachs disease? Well, it's this one right here out of the one, two, three, four. So it's a one-fourth probability. Okay. okay, let's go over here. Let's say mom is normal and she's a carrier. Okay. Let's say that dad is normal, and, but dad is totally free of this. He is homozygous dominant. Now then, mom could pass on big T for normal, little t for Tay-Sachs. Dad will always pass on big T for normal. What is the probability that a child from this couple would have Tay-Sachs? Well, that means that the child would have to get big little t from mom and little t from dad. That is not going to happen probability of a child from this couple having Tay-Sachs is zero. It is not going to occur. This couple could have this child and they could have this child. So there would be a one half chance that the child would be a carrier like mom, one half chance the child would be totally free of it like dad. Okay so um, one more possibility real quick. Let's go back over here to this one let's say let's say you are about 20 years old you had a brother who died of Tay-Sachs disease what is probability you're a carrier it's not 50 percent because if you're 20 years old we know you are not this individual right here with Tay-Sachs that leaves three possibilities two of which are carriers so the probability that you're a carrier if we've eliminated the possibility that you actually have the disease, probability of you being a carrier is now two out of three, or two thirds. Okay, so we'll stop this one at this point and pick up with Huntington's in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.